Hey y'all and welcome to Monarch's Market and welcome to my beautiful and easy lantern DIYs video. Today I'm going to make a few lanterns. Uh, mainly, I want to say it's mostly from Dollar Tree things and they couldn't be easier. So let's get into DIY number one. I am going to make this lantern after Jenny Lee. Now I recently found Jenny Lee when I was looking on Pinterest and YouTube and Instagram for lanterns because I wanted to recreate some and I found hers. This is her lantern right here and I literally fell in love with it. I love the way she did a topper but you guys know I'm not a bow girl like I literally suck at bows so I didn't even dare try to recreate the top but I loved the way the bottom of it was shaped. So I immediately went straight up to my Dollar Tree to buy all of the things that she used in hers, but I got a different bottom for mine, which you'll see in just a minute. She uses a plate and I used a cake plate, but isn't that just gorgeous the way that's shaped? I love it. I love the way she decorated it. It's just beautiful. So I got the same bowl that she used, just a little ceramic bowl, this pie pan from the Dollar Tree. It says pie pan right there. And then this cake plate. My main reason for getting the cake plate was this beautiful scalloped edge here. Well, dummy me when I, oh, and I got the two pack of Hot Wheels. Now watch when you get these tracks that there's two of them in there because I bought some other ones and they only had one track. So, like I was saying, the reason I got it was because of this scalloped edge. And I thought, you know what, the circles in the middle are perfect. It's going to give me the perfect placement for my bowl where it's right in the middle. So, I flipped it over to get the placement because I knew I could see through the bottom of the mark I was making, right? Well, goofball me ends up gluing it like that. So... <laughs> Y'all, if I had a brain, I'd be dangerous, I'm telling you. So anyway, the only thing I did different was I should have flipped my plate back over. But in the end, it really doesn't matter because you can't tell with the way I decorated it, whether it was one side or the other. So I'm going to take the black magic marker and I'm going to draw a line around where this bowl sits. And it is literally perfectly in the middle because of those lines on the plate. So I just draw my line and once I get my line drawn, then I go in with my wood hot glue sticks. Now I want you to see, you know how I'm always ranting and raving about how well this stuff glues. Watch what's fixing to happen. I am just going to make a bead of hot glue all the way around the inside of that black line because if you remember, I drew the line on the outside, so I want to go inside just a little bit, set my bowl right on top of the glue, and one thing about the wood glue, though, is you got to know where you're going to set your stuff, because once you set it there, it is not coming off. All right, I'm literally doing this in real time. Look at that. Real time now. I didn't speed that up at all. It will not come off now. I can shake it, shake it, shake it, and it will not come off. Now, this is where the pie pan comes in. And it's going to look like, because of the angle of my camera, like I am scooting it way too far down and it's not in the middle. But I can assure you that it is in the middle. It's just the angle of the way the camera is. So once I get it in the middle, I'm going to do the same thing and draw a line around where I need to put my hot glue at. So I'm going to do my line. And then I'm going to pick it up. I didn't quite close the line in. And it still, it looks like it's off-center, but I promise you it's not. Anyway, then I'm going to take my glue, and I'm going to do a bead of hot glue right around where that line is at. I'm telling you, I am obsessed with this stuff. The only bad thing about this is it dries yellow. It doesn't dry clear like regular hot glue does. So again, I'm going to go just inside the little black line. It comes off really easy off of this pan. You know how it strings whenever you're pulling your gun away, how you get that string. It came right off. But 
when you use that much, it's not going to come off like it will not come apart. Now, if you put pressure and, and really pride on it with it being metal, you could pop it off, but it's not going to come off as easy as regular hot glue would come off. So now that the bottom is done, now I'm going to take my Hot Wheel tracks and I'm going to add them. Again, using the one that has two in the pack. The one that has one in the pack has a different little blue piece, which is like a loop, or you can do a loop-de-loop -loop thing, but I wasn't paying attention, and I bought, I want to say like four or five of the other ones, so I'm going to end up taking those back so I can double my count, you know what I mean? Like, there's no sense in having one when I can get two for the same price. They're the same length and everything. So now I'm just going to take my wood hot glue and get it all over my hands and my fingers. <laughs> no, really, I'm going to glue my racetrack down. The, that glue hurts. When it gets hot, duh, hot glue, like it literally peels the skin off my fingers. And I'm terrible about that. I'm forever burning my fingers. So anyway, I'm going to just really eyeball it because with it being a circle like that, you just can eyeball it and put it from one side to the other. Once I get my glue on the back and get my racetrack set in place, then I'm going to do what you saw me just do and go to the front of it and make sure that I get some glue in the front to hold it down really good where it doesn't come back up. Now, I can lift that whole entire thing with that racetrack because of that wood glue. So again, I'm just eyeballing it to see where I want to put the second piece and overlapping it. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to glue my racetracks down on this piece. Now, once I get the racetracks glued down, just for a little bit of texture and character, depth and dimension, whatever word you want to add to it, I am going to add some of this white nautical rope. You can use white, you can use brown, you can use ribbon, lace, like you can leave it plain. You don't even have to use anything. But I thought it would give it a little bit of texture and just make it look prettier and, I don't know, just give it a little more character, basically. So I'm going to take that white nautical rope and I'm going to place it on the race car tracks all the way on both sides from the bottom all the way over to the other side. Once I get that on there, then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a topper. Now, if you remember, Jenny used a beautiful bow with some greenery, some flowers, and all of that fancy stuff, but I just, I'm, I'm a bow, what, what's the word, let me think. I don't know, bow challenged maybe? <laughs> It's horrible, y'all. Every once in a while, I can use my little bow dabra and make a pretty decent bow, but that's by sheer luck. So now I'm going to take this little finial that I got from Woodpecker Crafts recently, and I'm just marking my area where I need to cut my rope because obviously I don't want to glue my finial on top of my rope because then it would, it would be wobbly and it just wouldn't sit right. So I'm cutting my little piece of rope, making my area for my finial. I'm going to put some hot glue in there and just get it glued down and get that all tucked in where it's really pretty. And now I'm going to the track underneath and adding a little bit of glue, pressing them together where now it's just one piece. And now listen, I took it outside and spray painted it but it was literally 114 degrees, feels like temperature here that day, and I wasn't about to film for y'all because I was, it was miserable. I didn't even want to be out there, <laughs> but it only took five minutes for my thing to dry, so that was good. So now I'm just going to take some flowers, and I'm going to put them in there, really just kind of placing them down in there. I mean, it wasn't hard. I had four bunches of flowers, and I just sort of put them in each one of those little four openings, and then I took some of the same little pumpkins that she did, the raffia pumpkins that you can get on a stick at the Dollar Tree, and I want to say there's five of them there, and I placed them around, and I'm going to show you what it looked like 
without doing anything to the bottom first. So once I got those placed in there, this is what it looked like if I would have just left the bottom plain. I thought it turned out really cute. So let me know down in the comments after I show you both ways. Which way do you like it best? Do you like it this way best? See, there you can see where I didn't flip the plate over, but it still don't look that bad to me. But I love it all one color. Like, that just brought the whole thing together by painting it. And I painted in brown hammered spray paint that I will leave a link for in the bottom of the description box. So now I'm just going to add this piece of greenery right here around the whole bottom. And this is what it looks like with the bottom done. This is my favorite right here. So let me know which is your favorite, the one without the greenery or the one with the greenery. Mine's definitely with the greenery. But everybody's taste is different, so let me know which one you like the best. Look at those little pumpkins. They're just perfect in there. And then there's the greenery. It hides all that stuff on the bottom, but it still gives it the height that it needed. And I'm telling you, y'all, when I seen Jenny Lee's, I fell in love with it. And I couldn't wait to make one. And I'm so glad that it turned out like this. Now, let's get into DIY number two. This is a little more simple, but look how pretty it is. Now, this picture came from the Dollar Tree, as usual. And I'm not going to do anything to this except for flip it over and start with the tracks. Now, this is the one I was telling you about that ended up only having one track. And it's got a different little blue piece right there. So, that, I wanted to get this video done for this particular one. So, I did use them. But, I mean, it is what it is. I'm going to take the rest of them back and get trade them in and get my money's worth. <laughs> so now I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other track and I'm just going to place them down and glue them. Glue them on there front and back to make sure that I get a good, get a good seal. Now I'm going to do something a little different on this one. Instead of doing the rope, I'm going to do some little half beads. Now, look here. You don't have to even do anything to it because my third DIY is an older DIY that I've done that I'm going to bring back and show you. And I didn't do anything to it. So, you don't have to add anything extra to the tracks. But I wanted to use different textures and different things on the tracks to show you how adding just a little bit of something, something makes it completely different. Another thing you can do too is you can paint it and you can add a real pretty ribbon to the top of those tracks to bring out like a, a certain color or whatever. So anyway, it's just a thought. Here is where I'm going to take these little half beads that I want to say I got from, I want to say Woodpecker Crafts. Maybe Timu. Honestly, I don't remember. But if I had my rethers, I would say go to Woodpecker Crafts for your items because I just I'm, I just love Woodpecker Crafts. I don't get paid for saying that. I don't get a thing for saying that. But I'm telling you right now, they are amazing. Their products are always amazing. And I will have a link to Woodpecker Crafts down in my description box. So anyway... I'm just going to take those little half beads and I'm going to put them all up and down both sides of this track. Now, I hadn't thought it out about what I was going to do to the top nor the bottom when I was doing this. So, I got to thinking, I had these little cups right here and I thought maybe if I flipped it upside down and put a little ping pong ball on top of it, that would make a cute top. But once I did it and I eyeballed it, I just, it wasn't working for me. Now I had these little legs and I thought, well, I'll put that on there and add a little ping pong ball to the top. But that just didn't make no sense. <laughs> no sense at all. So I scratched that idea too. And I had some of these, I think three of them were already painted. And I just decided to paint a fourth one and use those for feet to the bottom to add a little bit of character to the bottom. Then I went with a finial 
on the top, and I was like, well, dang it, I got a finial on the other one, and while that one looked gorgeous like that, I didn't want it to be quite that big, so I kept trying, kept trying till I come up with something else, and I'll show you what that something else was in just a minute. But I did decide to take these little feet that I had and use them for the bottom because I thought those would be really pretty on the bottom. And I don't think I showed you after I paint this, me going back and putting them on the bottom because they were wood and I didn't want to change that. I did want it to remain that real pretty wood look. So I got a third one and I painted it in the antique wax, but did not wipe it off to give it a little bit darker color. And that's when I decided to, anyway, so I would have a set of four. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's when I decided to take some more of that rope that I used in the first one and put it across the bottom all the way around on this one. Adding just a little bit more character and texture to this one. So again, I take my wood hot glue so that it'll be good and solid, and I glued this rope all the way around the bottom. And what you see me doing here is just taking some of that glue and gluing the bottom together so that it doesn't fray in the end because if you don't seal it up somehow on the bottom, it will start coming apart and just like fray, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes when I'm doing these voiceovers, y'all, I get so lost. I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over. I definitely lose my place and start talking about something that ain't even part of what I'm doing yet. So thank you for hanging in there with me. And thank you for being so patient with my ADHD and my tongue going way faster than my brain and always being confused and turned around. I don't know why y'all put up with me sometimes, but I really appreciate the fact that you do. So now that I've got that done, I finally decided what I was going to do with the top. And that was to take one of these little pieces that I've had. I've been using them for feet for different things for quite a while now. They're drawer knobs is what they are. And I went ahead, the very top middle one, I did not glue down because I knew I was going to put something there. So I took that little knob, I removed the little half bead, and just glued down that little knob right there, and it ended up being absolutely perfect for it. Once I got that done, I took this one outside, and I spray painted it in. I think I said on the first one brown, but I want to say it was bronze hammered. I will link the paint for both of these down in the description box either way. And once I took it outside and got it painted, I brought it back in and put these little feet on. Feet on. Now, this is me going in with that fourth, not third. A minute ago, I said I did a third one. Goofy me. Anyway, I did a fourth one because I needed four for the bottom. <laughs> like I said a minute ago, thank you for hanging in there with me when I have my blunders. And Lord knows I have more blunders than any body else does on YouTube, I can guarantee you. It's embarrassing, but you know what it is, what it is. I am who I am, and I just can't help it. But I do so much appreciate the fact that y'all hang in there with me and laugh at me and laugh with me when I make these dumb mistakes. Now, this is what this one looked like once it was all painted with that bronze hammered spray paint and it is just absolutely gorgeous that is where i that's what it looked like rather when i put the legs on it and to me the legs just made this i'm just gonna add a little piece of greenery here to the bottom and add a candle i'm gonna add these little beads just tuck them in there just to i don't know add, add a little bit of character or something i'm gonna light the candles and then i'm gonna show you what this one looked like when I was done with it, and I just love this. It is so simple, so easy. Let's see, I got one, two, maybe five dollars in the whole thing, maybe, because I use just not very many of those beads, so that ain't even going to add up to a dollar. That piece of rope I had left over that you can count 
as part of DIY number one's cost, which was $1.25, and it did both of these. One, one set did both of these is basically what I'm trying to say. But look at how pretty this one turned out. I'm just so in love with it. Now, I'm not done. I'm going to show you another one, but I do want to show you what these two look like together. Aren't they just absolutely gorgeous? Now, I'm going to show you DIY number three, which is one that I did a while back, and then we're going to come back to these two, and I'm going to show you the final reveal. Now, I'm going to use the same original voiceover for DIY number three. This is a lantern that i done from She's So Crafty. I love D. D is probably one of the most amazing creators out there, and her imagination is crazy good. So, we take this picture here from the Dollar Tree and these Hot Wheel tracks. Yes, those are Hot Wheel tracks. And you see how simple it is. We just put them in there corner to corner, glue them down, make sure they're glued on the back and the front so that you have a good seal and, you know, they're not going to go anywhere. And then I found this little candle at the Dollar Tree, but all I needed was the top off of it. So, I cut it off, glued it to the top. And then I took a ping pong ball. Now, the only thing I did different was that little wood piece right there. Dee made hers a little bit different, but she did use the ping pong ball for the top. How genius is that? Once it was all put together, that's literally it, guys. It's that easy. I took it outside, and I used some white paint by Rust-Oleum 2X. Gave it a good coat of spray paint. And that's just so that I didn't have to use so much chalk paint to cover all of that up. Then I brought it back in and I did use my Waverly White chalk paint to get into those little nooks and crannies there. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Dee did the same thing. She came in and went back over it with the white chalk paint. After that, I took this Deco Art Vintage Effects paint that's very, very similar to the Waverly Antique Wax. It's really the same thing. And I just distressed this down. And once I distressed it down, it was completely done and ready for me to decorate. And I absolutely love the way this little lantern turned out. I really want to know what you think about this down below. And D, I hope if you see this that you're happy with my recreation of your lantern. I have heard that so many people are recreating it, but I mean, my goodness, look at it. It's gorgeous and it's a genius idea to use those Hot Wheel tracks to make this gorgeous lantern. I want to say I did this about two years ago, right after I very first started my channel. And this is still one of the favorite things I've ever done. Now, I know that the first two were a little bit a little bit more ornate than this one. But because I was so new back then and knew so little about crafting, I was so proud when I made this. And this still sits in my den to this day. So, let me know down in the comment box below what you think about my three lanterns today. Which one was your favorite out of the three of them? Was it the first one, the second one, or the one that I recreated from D? I think mine is definitely DIY number one, the one that I created from Jenny Lee family, because I don't know. I just love the height. I love the ornateness of it. Um, you know, it's hard because I really love number two because of the way I decorated that one. But I love number three because that was one of the first things that I ever did when I first started my channel. So it is hard for me, but I really do think it's probably number one. So thank you, Jenna Lee, for creating yours to give me an idea to recreate mine. I love this hammered paint. I think it's so pretty and I'm going to show you in just a second the actual paint can so that if you want to get some, you'll know which one to get. But right now, I just want to show you all three of these lanterns together and how cute they are. They are 
Dollar Tree other than the little feet and the finials and the top of DIY number two. Other than that, they're all 100% DIYs from the Dollar Tree. So thank you for coming today to my beautiful and easy lantern DIYs video. I can't wait to see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To my beauties in my live chat right now, mwah, you know I love you. You know me. You're my favorite people. And I appreciate you always being here for me during every single premiere. If you haven't ever joined us on the premiere, come on over. We have a good time. If for some weird reason you've never been to my channel before, my name is Brenda. I'm happy to have you. Welcome to Monner's Market. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. Bye now.